Previously on the Jay and Dan podcast. I thought it was you in a wig trying to arrange a way to get to the cottage. Like, hello, Bob. I'm Darlene, Dan's sister. Mm-hmm. Hey, Bernice, just uh, saw her in the makeup room. She told me her dad's in the Orono Fair. And then I said, well, guess what? And I told her how I got invited to be Santa. And I feel bad because I crushed her news. Because mm-hmm. that's going to be the next big trend. <laughs> <laughs> A bit of a stifle of burp there. Mm-hmm. You got O. Henry? No, what happened with O. Henry was, you no, know, I didn't read the correct combination of the <laughs> I hate that. one. I hate that <laughs> so much. And it comes much. down and I'm like, oh, no. Mm-hmm. We're sitting there talking and this is where it gets interesting. She... Finally. She for the dog. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I just said the stage. You know how it is, Dan. Uh, oh, you could have so, said it a lot quicker. Continue. Mm-hmm. The number one way when you're trying to find people who you're not sure, like, where they are, you look at their pornography history. Oh my god. Isn't that fascinating? And I'm f- mm-hmm. Tim is calling me. <laughs> Answer. Hello? For what? For what? For nailer. Ooh, we have a nailer? <laughs> it's now? Yes. You're listening to the Jay and Dan podcast, presented by our good friends at Coors Light. If a Coors Light, Light drops down to room temperature, it explodes. almost done November. That's right. That's how the calendar works. <laughs> November flew by. It did fly by, didn't it? I'm just currently <laughs> cleaning my microphone because I believe there is vomit on this microphone. Did uh, Brian Hayes, host <laughs> of uh, TSN's Overdrive Afternoon Show, puke what? all well, over the mic today? I, I believe uh, Gareth Wheeler just sat there, so oh, that may so, be his vomit. Oh, he was so upset at... Uh, at the way Raptors fans have embraced Vince Carter. He's so mad about that, isn't he? About it makes him sick, literally. It, it, it literally makes him sick to see how we've forgotten how Vince quit on the Raps at the end and forced them into a horrible, horrible trade with the Nets. I haven't forgotten that. But I also think, like, I was pretty upset about that for a long time, and I couldn't believe people forgot about it. But at the same time, it's been a long time. And he's 41 now? Like, maybe we should just celebrate him. Yeah, life's too short. Come on, it's life is too short. I think we're good to go now. Uh, All those, these Lysol... No, we've been going. We're not waiting for you to clean your mic. Um, Do you have those Lysol wipes at home? Yeah, we've got them everywhere. We've got a kid. So... You know how it is. You, you clean up a counter or something, and you've got it in your fingers, and you eat something, and you're like, oh, man, that's got Lysol in my mouth. But I guess it's it, clean? Again, I that's never happened. All the years I've used Lysol wipes, I've never been like, here I go, <laughs> cleaning the counter, and, ooh, look, there's a turtle. Yum, turtle. <laughs> oh. No, but you, you, you finish, and you're like, there's like a, a bowl of chips, and you just take a chip, and you're like, ah, I taste a little Lysol there. I never noticed that. Like, maybe, I just assume, because you wipe your hands, right? I mean, with, like, your kid's wipes once in a while, you're like, ah, I'll just do that. There you go. Don't, doesn't taste bad? No. Maybe, maybe you're attracted to the taste of soapy uh, disinfectants. And you're going to like the difference, too. It's killing the germs inside me. And there are many of them. After this (laughs) weekend, you were at the Grey Cup and just ripping it up, having a terrific time. What an event. We talked about this on our uh, TV program. Um, If you ever get the opportunity, and you should have it on your Canadian to-do list. You should. You should have it on your to-do list. Yes. Don't just go for the game. You go for the parties because the parties are the best part. Go for, at minimum, try to go like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Try to fly in Friday. (laughs) Yeah. That's exactly what I did. That's what Dan did. and Well, but you didn't get to stay for the game because we had to do our show. But um, but you had a great time. Yes. So um, went there to host a gal on the Friday night. You couldn't make it. You had uh, family commitments. Yes. Uh, so Kate Burness hosted it with me, and she's going to join us on the show today. Yeah, she's one of our guests. Uh, so we did really that. Really looking forward to hearing how her perspective of hosting an event with you. 
Because have you guys had you guys ever hosted anything together? No, before? We no. Maybe did like two sports centers maybe together. Wow, if that. Wow. So just to be thrown together like that. That's. I'm not even joking. That's a lot of pressure just to expect you guys to have instant chemistry on stage. So I can't wait to get Kate's uh, perspective. What was your perspective about working with her? Great working with her was just a a really bad room acoustically. Right. <laughs> like it was a gargantuan room. There was 2,200 people there, and every single one of them was talking and not listening to anything going on stage. It's a little like emceeing a wedding where they're serving the food. Like, remember, my wife brought this up just the other day. Remember we emceed the Tim Hortons uh, gala? Yeah. And it was the best. She said it because she was there with us. She's like, that was the best run event ever because they separated when we talked from everyone eating, then everyone could eat. And then they shut down the bar. And then they when shut people the down the bar. Yeah. And then people had to talk a little bit more. But they just had a nice separation. Just enough. They didn't, like, stop the fun. But it was just like, okay, we got to talk. So we're going to stop serving food now. And yeah. it made a big difference. This one was an open bar the whole time. And I think once the people at the back of the room realized they couldn't hear, they're just like, ah, f*** it. I'm getting drunk. By the way, this podcast is brought to you by friends at Coors Light. Oh, Coors Light's everywhere. And the banquet beer, too. People love the banquets. Toolsy, we forgot our bat mugs that mm-hmm. Coors Light sent us. So we improvised. We have these uh, these no-name cups I got from the old <laughs> Canada AM green room. And I drew Coors on it. But then on the back, as you can see, I misspelled it. It says Coors. <laughs> it says Coors there. I Weren't they a band? Coors Light. <laughs> uh, so overall, you've been to a few Grey Cups now. Where does this rank for you? My first ever Grey Cup was in Edmonton. I believe it was 2002 they hosted. That was like a month before I started work at TSN. Um, so that was my first. And this is my second or third. No, at least third. Maybe fourth. Um, top of the list right there. Top. Tops. Awesome. Yeah. Great time. Um, it was funny. So I was sitting having a, a late lunch at my uh, my lobby bar on the Saturday. I noticed, did you eat at your lobby bar in the hotel pretty much the whole time? Yeah, because I didn't bring any winter gear because people were telling me, oh, it's so warm here. I didn't bring a winter coat. I went outside for two seconds. I'm like, I'm not walking anywhere. All right. Fair enough. So I went back and saddled up to the bar. And they were very nice. Very big uh, uh, fans of the podcast and uh, fans of the show. So I also wanted to give them my business. Uh, that's at the Sutton place. The, so the was, Sutton place? It was yeah. the Chop. The oh, yeah, chop. yeah. Right, right. Yes, yes. Um, so these guys were sitting next to me at three. And they're, like, talking about uh, what's going on. They're like, yeah, I don't. This is, again, Saturday of Grey Cup. This is Three in the afternoon. Yeah. So right. these guys are like, yeah, I think everyone went hard last night and most people take tonight off. I'm like, uh, guys, I'm going to have to interrupt you here. Yeah. Um, that's that's not what's going to happen tonight. No, no. That's say, people never are, happened. People are going to the limit and beyond tonight yeah. because Whoa. the game's not until 4 o'clock. Low. You can sleep in if you're going to the game. Yeah. Yeah, there's no reason to take <laughs> any nights off. Guys, early night. Saturday, Guys, Saturday in the bed, 9P, Saturday night, 9P, nighty night, guys. Big game tomorrow. <laughs> we only have 16 hours to sleep, prep, put on our team makeup, <laughs> make uh, our signs, yes, have uh, children. And then, so the night begins, and um, started that one at the Spirit of Calgary. Uh, my good friend Mark Stiles used to do play-by-play for the Fort McMurray Oil Barons, was organizing a party there. Awesome. Is it the Hotel McDonald? What a venue. When you go into the back there, you have the Ottawa River Valley, mm. or the Ottawa, the Edmonton River Valley. The North Saskatchewan. Uh, you've got the, the hotel lit up. You've got all these barrels full of wood people are it, it's screams canada and then you're like guys and then there's a wild party five feet to our left and there's uh, that for people who don't know the hotel mcdonald is the cp hotel in edmonton so if you live in toronto it's your your version of the royal york or saskatoon it's your version of the besboro etc cetera, etc cetera. it's the nice old hotel in town and uh, i think it's where the cast of sctv lived when they when they it did is, the show there you walk around and you're just like yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's very cool. It's just cool. So um, spent a bunch of hours there, and then, uh, again, you'd go out to the fire because you know how those parties are. It's just nonstop noise. There's bands playing. There's people yelling. People are yeah. drunk, so it's just constant noise, so you have to get outside. Yeah. 
So I was standing by the. I've never felt that way. I, I, you said that last night. I've never. Yeah. I never have the wherewithal to think I got to get out of here. I know that's good for me, <laughs> yes. but I never like think. Oh, you know, I'm just always just there, and I never get out of there. Um, so I was standing by the burning <laughs> barrels, like a hobo, and there's a having chats Jeez. with people, and the guys are like, "Oh, this is my twelfth Grey Cup," wow. and talking to other people. They're like, "This is the best party," and we're all just like loving Canada. And I looked at my watch. And I'm like, guys, I. I don't know how you're going to take this. I got good news and bad news. They're like, well, what's the bad news? I said, it's only 6.30. <laughs> he said, what's the, what's the good news? I said, it's only 6.30. And then yeah, it, it is. Because it's pitch black because it's winter. So we all thought, ah, oh, it must be around 9, 10. No, we still no. had the whole night. No, you had a long night ahead of you. Yeah. What time did you shut her down on Saturday, do you think? Um, Two or three. Oh, that's not bad for you. I went to all the rooms. Yes, Spirit Edmonton went to the uh, the schooners room. Yeah, so everyone's saying that party is one of the best parties. It was a wild time. Now, when they actually get a team, and it was officially announced, that was kind of cool, too, over the course of Grey Cup weekend. They said, because I guess, what, it was two weeks ago, that Atlantic football group mm-hmm. said, well, we're picking between forward names. And you and I were both like, why don't you just call them the schooners? That's what everyone thinks they should be. And anyway, they announced, yes, we're going to yes. call them the schooners. So that's great. And they're going to play in Dartmouth? Is that what's happening? As someone said to me once, you know what the nickname for Dartmouth is? Sig Lips. Because cigarette, lips, dart, mouth. Uh, (laughs) Ah. Hey, that reminds me. Yeah. We got to give a shout out to Jay and Dan Dart Pals. We mentioned Jay and Dan Dart Pals a couple of weeks ago. And uh, a few of them direct messaged me and just said, hey, man, I'm a Jane and Dart pal. So just shout out to all those guys who are still still rocking the darts, <laughs> like producer Tim. <laughs> and uh, so wait, but isn't isn't Dartmouth like part of Halifax or I'm so out of it with my. Uh, stop how you for geography. But like they, <laughs> they picked a site. Kind of in the Halifax area, didn't they? I have no clue. I was kind of out of the loop. Another thing that's fascinating me, Jeff O'Neill's hair on this TSN broadcast. What's going on here? It looks fantastic. Very slick. Is it like, is he growing it longer? Or uh, did he maybe get a toupee or something? (laughs) It looks great. He looks like a million bucks. Yeah. He's uh, he's living life right now. Speaking of shout-outs, shout-outs to all the uh, the friends of the show and the podcast people that... uh, that uh, came over and said hi during Grey Cup Week. Mm. Uh, you're much appreciated. Um, and speaking of darts. Mm. You tried one. No. So I thought I'd when I'd go out to take my uh, relaxer from my brain, the silence, I would smell weed and everything. I never saw one joint during Grey Cup Week. Not mm. Didn't smell it once. Didn't see it once. And I asked people, like, no one smokes here? They're like, yeah, I guess not. Come on, it'll be fun. I guess my only explanation is the Grey Cup crowd is a booze partying crowd traditionally. And uh, maybe, you know, I'm sure they in, some of them indulge, but overall, it's it's all about the booze, isn't it? Maybe, yeah. I think the guys that said it was an early night were into the weed. I think right. that's why. Maybe that's like, why they're like, oh, man, <laughs> it's f-ing late, man. We got to get to bed. We are going to miss the Grey Cup tomorrow. Oh, and while in makeup, the only drawback of the Grey Cup and all the parties... Wait, and while, in, while you were just in makeup just in before makeup, you came... So before with, the podcast, Dan usually gets makeup done. Speaking with Jennifer Hedger, and we were talking about the game, and she said, how was it? And I said, talked about the parties, and she said, I know, aren't they the best? And I said, the only problem is, though, the lineups. So if only they had someone to tell you, if you're waiting in a lineup, you're like, this one's 45, but if you go to her schooner house, that lineup's only five... Five minutes, or if you go there, that's ten minutes, and then you can save your spot or something. That would be hmm. that'd be a why game changer. You, uh, and she said, "Why don't why don't they have a Grey Cup app for that?" That's a great idea. Maybe you and Hedge should create that Grey Cup Grey Cup party waiting app. Okay. It has changed my life. Do you oh, think that would make you, by you guys Coors rich? Light. Perfect. Boom! And you know, Coors Light is listening, and they are fired up and ready to get that going with you. And then tonight, we're interviewing uh, the new star of Sports Center on uh, social media. Yes, on the show. On the television show. That star, Ben Teller. <laughs> oh, and our, uh, we have two guests on this podcast. Uh, Jeremy Taggart is our other guest because uh, this past week, he passed a kidney stone. He had a health scare. Yeah. Uh, went I, to Sunnybrook Hospital. 
I he thought it was something it. else. I think he thought it was appendicitis. Yes. And uh, from all accounts, passing a kidney stone is the worst pain in the history of anything, really, other than death, I think. <laughs> I've been thinking more about death lately. Oh, don't, I don't want to get into death. Like, when I, when I get close to it. Oh, you're getting closer every day. But, do, like, do I just have to accept it? Oh, yeah. And just, like, die slowly? Like, I want to die in my sleep. How do I do that? Can oh, I pop can, a bunch of pills? We can make it happen. Grey Cup week next and Grey Cup week well, next year. that soon. Oh, like, maybe... Okay. I'd love to die around, like, 95, but healthy. Is that possible, even? I mean, no. I, no, probably 95 not. 95 is too long. Around 85 is a good age. 80, no, how about 90? Let's split the difference. I die at 90. But again, you feed me just a handful of crazy pills to kill me. All right. Perfect. I just don't want to die. Like, I don't want all my... Because now that I have kids, I don't want them to be looking at me and me be like... Uh, 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 I'm in a lot of pain. They're like, yeah, Dad, you just got to accept it. I'm like, just give me something. Like, oh, by Just that, stick a needle in my face. By that time, we will have that figured out. <laughs> I don't think you, they put needles in your face. <laughs> Probably put it in a vein. <laughs> right in my eyeballs. Just a needle or two in my eyeballs. Just to numb the pain. Anyway, sorry for bringing this down, guys. Um, you know who I got insider info from at Great Cup Week? I love insider info at Grey Cup. On the Saturday, I'm talking to these guys, and they are a bunch of beers in. They admitted that, and they're like, you hear about the field? I'm like, what are you talking about? They say, it's like a skating rink. So I went and talked to someone who was, like, helping with the party. I'm like, is something wrong with the field? They're like, nah, it's fine. Everything's fine. Don't worry about it. And then come game time, the drunk guys were right. Yeah, they were right. And it was such a shame because it was, for Edmonton, practically balmy. Mm -hmm. Guys were working out in hoodies and... And sweatshirts, they didn't have, like, they, everyone looked so warm out there. I don't understand what happened. Were they watering it? Yeah, maybe they thought, okay, time for the outdoor game. <laughs> We're doing that again. Oopsies. Football. We f***ed up. Hair dryers. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't get it. It's turf, right? It's I not guess. natural grass anymore. But if it know. rained or something, could they not have done what Alabama did to their football field, <clears> brought <throat> in a couple of helicopters to, like, spray the water off? I don't know. I, I don't. I mean, I guess maybe it's, are, does Edmonton have a couple? Yeah, CFB Edmonton. It's right there. They could have had a couple of choppers there in a second. Oh, yeah. They had the snowbirds. They could just go down for a low pass. You think the snowbirds can just do that? I ah, sure. Why not? I know who else is at the spirit of Calgary party. And I mentioned this to you yesterday. The coolest human maybe I've ever met that could be straight from Western, John Huffnagel. Oh, yeah, Huffnagel. Guess yeah. what he was drinking? Coors. S silver Bullet. Nice. You saw a lot of people drinking Silver Bullets, and why wouldn't they? It's a delicious, refreshing. It's the world's most refreshing beer. And uh, I was going over to the bar, and I said, you want one? He's like, yeah, I'll take it. I'm like, okay. So I served him a Silver Bullet. Well, it looks like you and Huffnagel are tight. <laughs> No, next I, year, the Grey Cup's in Calgary next year. You could stay now at this place. Then I went back by the burning barrels with the hobos. What What would happen if Huff just texted you like, Dan, thanks for that course. Hey, listen, <laughs> Grey Cup's in my town next year. You want to stay at my place? And then you get there and you're like, hey, is your wife here, kids? He's like, no, no, I live alone. So <laughs> I have one bed. Uh, we'll be sleeping <laughs> together. Men <laughs> feed my mouth. <laughs> That's great. Now, now our friendship is over. And you're just quietly stripped down with tears running down your cheeks. We're already <laughs> arranging hotels for next year. Really? Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Bootsy's, Bootsy's in. Bootsy bailed, too. So you bailed on Great Cup Week. Bootsy bailed, my buddy Boots. Next year, I'm in big time. <laughs> next year, you can count on me. Hey, stuff. Um, we should uh, do a little podcast news before we get to our first guest. Toolsy, any, what's overall, though? Were you sad you missed the game? Because uh, well, it was a bad game, though. I don't like sitting outside, though. So I like the, uh, the <laughs> I like the rumors that the the schedule might be moved up. Well, they want to move it up at least a week, right? Is that sort of what um, Farhan was telling us? Farhan Lal, our CFL insider. I like that idea, but yeah. you know, I think the thought was, as Farhan said to us, 
it would be freezing cold in Edmonton this week, and everyone would be like, you know what? You're right, Kamish. Let's move it ahead even two weeks. But it was pretty nice, so it kind of kills his argument a little bit. Yeah. The field, though, that's a problem. Oh, well, CFL. I love it. It's so much fun. Uh, Stoff, what do you got for uh, podcast news this week? This is Jay and Dan, podcast news. All right, gentlemen, pleasure to join you here. This is great having podcast Christoph news. on it. Uh, I guess we'll start with the little update from last week when I couldn't find the Wild Water and Wheels theme this song. This is amazing. Right. Yes. At first I thought Dan just made the whole thing up, but it turns it did exist. And Pete Dalladay, who we mentioned last yes. week, sent it to me. And here is said theme. Yes. We Now that is a jingle. I didn't understand. Brings, but memories flooding back, I bet. That is I mean, a that catchy. Is, that's a catchy tune. That's as eighties as <laughs> jingles get. The <laughs> boop, 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 boop. Can we hear that one more time? Stuff. I couldn't understand the the beginning. It was like. <laughs> we got the time. The time of your life. <laughs> But the best part is, if you showed up at this place, you're like, this is how good this life gets. This is depressing. Gets. This is how good this it is, gets. This is life peaks here. <laughs> Just a bunch of Just urine recap. infested pools. and. This is a little uh, play park. In my hometown of Peterborough, I don't know if it, it's no, still it's open. No, like it, it's like a, it's like a, like a water slides, right? Uh, no water slides. They had like wait, the carpet. What? Wait, hold on. I don't back think... it up. I, what do you wait. mean? Not no water slides. I thought was, was there a... wheels of any sort? Yes, there's go karts. <laughs> but there's like All a right. carpet slide. What happens? Do people throw buckets of water on you as you ride your go kart? <laughs> there was like a a mini uh, roller coaster. Let's see what they have if it's still open. Let's go. Can, sure we hear, has to be. can we hear it one more time, Chris? We got the time. We got the time. Wild water kingdom. Wild water wheels? Wild water and wheels. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, it looks like they have water <laughs> We've got <laughs> wild water and wheels. We've got a water slide now. Wow. That... Oh, bumper boats. Yeah, so they got go-karts, bumper boats, pipeline, coaster, go-kart track. Yeah, so bumper boats is the water. Okay. And so... batting cages, mini golf. <laughs> so, hold on. so this is still open? Still open. You know what would be a great podcast contest stuff? To have a few listeners win an afternoon with Dan at Wild Water and Wheels. <laughs> Perhaps they could do the best cover of this song. Oh, yes. Yes. Wheels. I, if someone out there has the musical ability and wherewithal to do a cover of that jingle and produce it and send it to us. You know who could? We will make, we will make something happen for you. Maybe some, maybe Coors Light will step up and with some... Uh, Library delicious. Voices would do a killer one. They would do a killer one. I'm, I think they might be on hiatus. We'll have to talk to them about that, but they would do a good one. Yeah. Okay, what's next, stuff? Right, and, we'll, and then we've got to call Kate. We got one more here. We'll okay. Do. okay. Uh, this one's from Diego Maradona, oh. who was uh, interviewed <laughs> Legend. post a uh, Mexican soccer match in the MX League. And when he was asked what his impressions of the league are oh after watching God. a the, couple of games. The country he won a World Cup in. Yes. This <laughs> was his answer. No, the... the, the, the <laughs> Translation, anyone? Was he at the Spirit Edmonton? <laughs> He's been at the Spirit of Edmonton. I think a, he had as many wristbands as that. <laughs> yeah. He's been at the Spirit of Edmonton in his own way his entire life. Can I hear that again? Yeah, I go <laughs> 
No, eh, la, 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 do you at hey, least uh, think he's impressed with the league or? Hey, Diego Maradona, what do you think of uh, Sofia Vergara's boobs? No, eh, la, 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 <laughs> that is gold. I had never heard that. Oh, Thanks, man. Stuff. That Maradonis. He's uh man, he's got some problems. Let's... <laughs> <laughs> hey Maradona, how do you think Argentina's gonna do in the next World Cup? <laughs> Hey, Maradona, wild water and wheels, time of your life. Ah, Maradona, he would eat wild water and wheels. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> he is the gift that keeps on giving. Yep. I'm just amazed he's alive. As, who did more cocaine? Him or the entire band, Fleetwood Mac, from 1977 to 1987? Ooh, I think the band would have him beat, wouldn't they? <sighs> just by sheer volume. I don't know, though. Maradona. Insatiable appetites of all time kinds food especially judging by his current state um what a player speaking though. of consumption someone told me that that the spirit of it, the atlanta canada room or whatever the schooners room the schooners the party yeah they ordered something like <coughs> eighty thousand beers for the weekend i love it and i <laughs> hope they were all consumed this is what we were talking about it's a the, it already has a great reputation yeah. as one of the best parties at gray cup week and they don't even have a team yet so when they have a team, what's it's going to be insane. It's when they finally get the Atlantic Schooners in the CFL, it, the entire league's going to be like, my God, we should have yeah. all worked to make this happen 20 years ago. We should have all worked tirelessly. Same with Quebec City. Like, if there's an insatiable love for football in the province of Quebec. We got to get Quebec City in it. Met a bunch of people that already put down their deposits, 50 bucks a ticket. For uh, Schooners. Yep. Schoon Zone. I, a guy sent us, maybe we can put it out on Jay and Dan. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> yeah, my mic fell down. <clears throat> Dan had his own little wild water and wheels <laughs> incident there. But someone had a great uniform concept for the Schooners. Uh, they sent it to us. I, maybe we can post it on uh, Jay and Dan. Or we, maybe we could do it for The Argos clothes. should give them their uniforms. No. Because they've got a boat on them. No. But wait, no. I know. The Argos. But can you have two can boat get. logos? Well, they it's just an A now. So we'll just forget about the boat. Uh, okay. Kate? I, Kate Burness joins us. Um, are you back from Edmonton or are you uh, spending the week there? I'm going to spend the week. Yeah, nice. I decided to stay. By the way, the Edmonton airport, it's a gorgeous airport well, now. Well, it's finally they renovated yes. the out of it so i hadn't been there since the craft tour and i was i swear to you guys i landed i'm like i'm not in edmonton yeah you thought you got on the wrong plane right i did i, th I thought i was i actually i thought it was like in calgary or so i'm like i don't know where i am but this the airport there was a guy when i got off the plane and he was playing music he's playing like billy joel it was Billy Joel himself. <laughs> it was Billy Joel himself. <laughs> he has a residency at YEG. You, you would have known that you were in Calgary because Calgary's going undergoing a rental right now, right? Yes. I believe so. Big Massive rental at the airport. There. Yeah, big one. Big one. International airport. Kate, where are you seriously still in E-Town? Just hanging no, out at the Cook County Saloon? No, I actually took the red eye out of Edmonton last night. Wow. I had a couple of cocktails over at... Uh, I have well, no. I just had one cocktail at Nas Natasha Stanishevsky's sister's house, oh. and then I got to the airport and I was ocho solo. And I met a lovely couple in their seventies at the Wayne Gretzky bar in Edmonton, 
And Ooh, tell us I more. Got, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know where I, this is going. <laughs> right. So I, they're going to Veradero. Um, I was at like a, a low table, and they, their mobility wasn't great. Uh, so I invite them, like, do you guys want to sit down? I'll move. And they're like, why don't you stay here? And I was like, great. Ended up getting a little bit tipsy with this 70-year-old couple for like an hour and a half at the Edmonton airport and promptly got on the, on the plane with like Tracy Melcher. And I think I was yelling at the stewardess that Rod Black didn't blow. I'm like, get that guy out of first class. He took my E upgrade. I'm not even kidding. That's what happened. <laughs> yeah, because Rod Black <laughs> called the, uh, the Grey Cup on TSN radio. He did a killer job, as he always does. That is correct. He did a fantastic job. So, yeah, I, I don't know why. I mean, I just... I drank a little too much, and mm. I was mad that my E upgrade didn't work. Mm-hmm. And I guess I blamed Flacky. That's what I remember. Now, so I'm sorry if Flacky's listening to this. I'd like to apologize. He often does. He often yeah. does. And now he'll yeah. be in tears. Do you are do you often get belligerent on planes <laughs> like Alec Baldwin? I mean, it, it depends on the plane, <laughs> and it depends. No, I don't. No, I'm normally pretty good, and I KO'd really nicely on that one. But... And what was the percentage of people that were at the game on that plane? Did you, could uh, you get a feel 100. for it? A hundred. One hundred. Wow. Oh, wow. There were a couple ladies from Hamilton on the plane, and we were discussing at length the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Um, a lot. Oh, the Lumber Joes were behind me. Um, and those poor guys, they had been going hard. They are so much fun. Natasha and I did a shoot with them a while back. Um, but they looked exhausted, and then they had to go right to work. So they took the red eye to Toronto, Toronto to Whoa. Ottawa, and then they're like, "And we both have newborns." And I was like, oh, "Wow, wow!" I'm like, "Cool, I'm gonna go sleep for six hours." So, so, th- so that plane just proved my point. So I started the the podcast by uh, telling I was. Um having lunch next to these guys on the Saturday at my hotel, and they're like, yeah, everyone went hard last night. No one really goes hard Saturday night. Then they go hard after the game. I'm like, guys, no, people get the hell out of town yeah. on the Sunday. Oh, okay. the, the plane was, ab- everyone, Solomon Aluminium was on standby. Wow. He was he like. He got on, but. <laughs> <laughs> Did he get the E upgrade? Uh, no, and I didn't even talk to him, too. He's a very popular man. Yeah. So he did not get the E upgrade. They were, you should have seen us. Like, and the plane was rammed. I was middle seat. Wow. Ooh, Ooh that doesn't go over well with Kate. That's no bueno. No, oh, no, 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 no. I'm petite. I am no Mark Masters. I do not care. But I, like, curl myself up in a little tiny ball, and I can sleep pretty well. Now, you ho- you were very kind. You stepped in and ho- co-hosted the gala w- with Dan, and... I didn't realize this, but you guys had never really hosted not only a, like a live event like that before, but you hardly hosted sports centers before together. I'll never forget. I think Dan and I have hosted like twice together, and it must have been about eight, nine years ago now. And it was, and this, I think, clip lives on YouTube, but it's that your face was getting bit by puppies. Yes, yes, puppies biting sure. my face. I'm pretty sure he did. Well, I don't know if you did it more than once, Dan, but I'm pretty sure we did that together. Yeah, yeah. that would make sense. And uh. then I, I just remember thinking, because I was so young at the time and I wasn't like as laid back as I am now, I'm like, oh, is that allowed to be on TV? So <laughs> <laughs> you, That was the voice in your head? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, because it's my grandmother's voice. Um, but yes, I we, we didn't. But I, Dan, I thought, even though the crowd, I'm sure... I don't know if you guys have talked about this yet. Oh, we like, talked about the room. How okay? So I, okay. I went to the. I never even said what the concert was the next night that I went to. So, actually, Kate, I'll ask you this question because I already told Jay the answer. It was Kim Mitchell, Trooper, and Lover Boy. In what order do you think they went on stage? Okay, Kim Mitchell. Who was uh, Kim Mitchell, Lover Boy, and who else? Trooper. Trooper. Okay. Trooper, Loverboy, Kim Mitchell. That's what I thought, too. No, it was okay. Kim Mitchell, Trooper, then Loverboy. What? Yeah. I would have put Trooper, Kim Mitchell, then Loverboy. Because to me, Loverboy had the most international success. I knew almost every one of Kim Mitchell's songs. Then Trooper came on, and there was a bunch where I was like, I don't know if I know this song. Well, I'm oh. thinking more of the audience here. That's why. Yeah, maybe. I mean... Trooper's greatest hits, it's all hits. But uh, getting to my point, um, so I went to the back of that room during the concert, and if you closed your eyes, you could not tell what band was on stage or what song was being played. So I knew a Labatt's table at the back. I don't know if I told you this during the event, Dan. And they wrote me a note, and they're like, I'm sure you guys were great. We didn't know if it was you or Dan talking. Wow. (laughs) Wow. How could the I mean, I know I have a low voice, but that's that's mean. (laughs) Now, but you guys didn't really have any 
time to plan anything? Like, did the did the chemistry happen naturally? Oh, it went great. Uh, the first two rows loved the whole evening. We, we we crushed it with 40 solid people in that room of 2,300. <laughs> 40 people were loving our shtick. Did you see when the lieutenant governor for Alberta <laughs> finished your speech? She literally ripped it up on stage. She's like, that was a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> She did. She literally took her script and ripped it in half, and I was like, oh, I'm like, this is not good. And you, she was, uh, Dan, how badass was that woman? Oh, like, she, she was the best. Her husband I'm used like, to be CFL Commission. I want to party with that chick, seriously. And Randy and Brosy, the CFL Commission, we were supposed to interview him on stage for 10 minutes. Uh, yeah, the organizers like, no. are like, uh, guys, he's going to speak for 30 seconds. Wow. Yeah. He was like, forget yeah. this. He was yes. sitting at the back. Everyone you know what, was so bailing. Dan yeah. came up with awesome ideas, though. Like, we had, we just had, like, a pre-beer at the hotel before we left. And then, well, Dan had a pre-Caesar, and that's when I saw his ridiculousness suit first. Yes. And, uh, but then he asked, uh, like, other people there. He's like, okay, questions from the bar to Randy and Brosie, and it was actually yeah, really funny. Yeah, we asked funny. some drunk guy, but we asked five questions, Randy and Brosie, from the guys at the bar. The first one was boxers or briefs. Why do they <laughs> want to know that? I kind of am curious about that a little bit. No one's bit. curious about but that. But he answered yeah. briefs. Yeah, He's I know. He's a briefs guy. <laughs> Well, now you know. Yeah. What was the drink, Dan? Sloosh? The sloosh juice. That's the... Um, sloosh juice. Pit, that's pictures of screwdrivers that are at the Spirit Edmonton. It's ah. called sloosh juice. And he... So the question was, have you ever had any? He said, of course he's had sluice juice. Yeah, he's he's been, he's played in Grey Cups. He and knows. one of the other questions was, during Grey Cup week, like a solid day of parties, do you get a Grey Cup nap in? And he said he had a five-minute nap because <laughs> he had, like, grandkids and stuff there and all oh, that. Yeah. Um, speaking of that hotel, I think I told you this story, Dan, but the Spirit of Edmonton was at the hotel I was staying at. Oh, Were yeah, you guys right. at the same hotel, Kate? No, different. No, no, okay. no, no, I was put up at the way nicer hotel. Oh, yeah, that makes um, sense. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I went in for a workout on Saturday morning, and I think I got there at, like, 6.30 in the morning. Oh, a my cu- God. A pair Who of couples. Uh, Edmonton fans from the spirit of Edmonton had decided to take a dip in the pool and the pool was kind of attached to the gym. And then just like, Hey, Gabe, we're in this. And I was like, Oh my God. And the conversation that these two couples were having, they were talking about like couples therapy oh. and then they all got dressed. I'm like, what is going on at the spirit of Edmonton? Seriously. And then did they invite you into their marital bed? No, no. I, I said, I, I promptly got on that treadmill. So I put wait, were they, on. were they going to like, were they planning to hook up? Yeah. I don't know. I laughed at this point. I am like, but I got to tell you, I was really, I was pretending to watch Netflix, but really I was just watching like what was going on in the pool. I'm like, because something's going down. Kate, why are you up at 630 on Grey Cup week working out? You're you're like a fiend. You're a, you're a machine. But you think, no, that's like 830 our time. And then plus, too, the only night that I, the only morning where I felt like, oh man, I have to go <clears> sweat <throat> it. Dan, you and I drank a, <clears throat> like that bottle of Pinot after the awards. Oh. Ooh, Why? Bottle of Pino. Yep. And guess what time I woke up the next day? Two <laughs> thirty. Well, I woke up at six thirty. I guaranteed you weren't in bed by that point. Uh, oh I was God. probably just getting to bed. <laughs> you, to, you, you mentioned the suit, Toolsy. You got to explain. That um, to I wore a suit. Uh, it's from my uh, cousin's store, the uh, the Sensplex in Ottawa, the Hobbins Hockey Shop. Um, it's one of those crazy suits. It was black with uh, white stars all over it. So it's uh, it comes straight out of the box. You can get it for like one hundred and fifty bucks. And you can't go anywhere near a flame. That's right. It's 100% polyester, Sweet but 200% polyester. awesome. Nice and warm, I bet, in the cold Edmonton air. Yeah, it, it uh, dipped pretty low, and uh, as I said, I didn't bring any winter gear. Kate, so. um, I have a question. So overall, you were working a lot. Like, you did the gala on Friday, then you did all day Saturday on TV with Derek Taylor, mm-hmm. all day Sunday on TV. So it's not really, like, you can't really go that hard, right? Because I you... didn't, uh, uh, no word of a lie, <clears throat> I didn't go hard at all. Like, honestly, Dan, like that one night that, like, I had a couple glasses of wine, that was pretty much it for me. I was, because it's too hard. It's too hard to be hungover. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever been hungover in broadcast. It, it no, is no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy so no, you learn as you get older you're like okay you choose your spots well and then i tore it up with that 70 year old couple yeah. the airport that's and, when i went hard and backstage after the event you had to have a glass of wine because we were having a glass of wine with alan doyle i was gonna say when alan doyle's there and he what a canadian gem i 
can't understand a lot that he's saying, but he's <laughs> awesome. Now, Kate, there's another thing I wanted to ask you about. And uh, stuff, do you have it ready to go? This is something that we enjoyed very much from you, from uh, a project you worked on. I think it was last year. Here it is. Okay. I am so fired up. That is the most exciting. <laughs> you are so excited to go to England on WestJet. <laughs> Can we hear it again? So fired up. You are so fired up. Okay, guys, that, <laughs> that shoot, uh, people don't understand. We took a red eye over. Speaking of red eyes, we took a red oh, eye what's over. What's with all the red eyes? Why red eyes are the, they're the all, lights. Why do you people take think those? The E is glamorous. And then you get in. Uh, trust me, I had a great time. Like, I love working with WestJet. We go over on a red eye. We start shooting. Uh, we go out. We get up the next day. They were like 14 hour shoot days. It was, it was craziness because we had to pack everything into three days in London. And if you're not taking the tube in London and you're taking a car everywhere, it's atrocious. Like, it's so hard to get place to place. But I don't Anyways, understand. Why, what, you've got three days. You yep. shoot one day at, like, Trafalgar Square, Sherlock Holmes House, the nope. British Museum. You're nope. done. And then you take the next two days off. I don't understand. Nope. I, like, yeah. I don't understand yep. this you excess should be shooting, shooting one hour 14 tops. hour days? That's insane for <laughs> so, a 30 but second when half. I did that, you're so fired up. I don't know how many hours I had slept in three days, but it was like two, maybe 12 in three days. And I, <laughs> that was the end of the shoot. And then I cannot, okay, I hate listening to myself on television. I can't stand watching myself. That might be one of the worst. You should have so like, fired up. You should have done the your impersonation of yourself and done. I'm so fired up. I'm so fired up. Like I just sound like an <laughs> idiot. Like I can't stand it. Seriously, it's the but best. Like, you know what? But the best part about broadcasting as you get older, too, like, you just don't, it's just like, it is what it is, right? Like, I used to care so, it's not that I don't care, I just care less about stuff like hey, that. Did, you did the bank caring, and Did the bank good. accept their check? Which bank? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Last okay, stay there. You've got yeah, no problem with it. As long as you got paid, that's all that matters. <laughs> but I heard also on that, about that shoot that, like... How many people do you, do you really need on that shoot? I heard the whole brand partnerships department flew over. <laughs> we had two vans. I remember going to O2 Arena, <laughs> and I'm thinking vans. to myself, so we're in Kensington going over to O2, and like two vans, like it was everyone. And I'm, hey, it was fun. I mean, there were a ton of us there, but yes, there were a lot of people on that shoot. Yeah. Speaking of shoots, that McCain, oh my God, the McCain wedges thing. Did you guys see that, that Duffy did with Staniszewski? Yes, I did see it. I thought I it was, was very dying. funny. I thought it was, I was dying laughing I because... Was, I was impressed she had the shirt from the from the actual commercial. So, so what Kate's part... referring to, just wait, uh, uh, no, yeah. the McCain Wedges commercial, they did a a, uh, a mock-up of it, and she went to Duffy's hotel room. <laughs> what everyone asks now on our on our crew for our show, they're like... If she didn't show up, what were those guys planning on doing? Because the four guys in bathrobes hanging yeah. out in the room. Yeah, that's great cup week, baby. The best, the best <laughs> was like Milt in like a Santa like robe with a fedora on his head. But the best part of traveling with Natasha Sanchevsky, like we went and did a, an event in Lethbridge, Alberta. And we get in the plane and literally like this one guy's like, did she bring her wedges? And I'm yeah. like, oh. So I try to like eat it up. Like, I think it's funny. And I think she's kind of like, point, like, okay, I get it. Right. Um, by the way, that event, we sold our hair extensions for $5,300. Yeah. I don't know if you guys have ever heard that story. Creepiest thing ever. That, first of all, I didn't know you guys had hair extensions. Did a, did a guy buy them? Uh, two guys bought them. Oh, God. God. Oh, my like, God. It's not even God. like full set of extensions, just Ugh. like the clip-in part of them. Oh, that is beyond creepy. Boy, you guys deal with a lot of stuff that we don't have to deal with. Do you guys um, deal with any of that? No, 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 not hair extensions. We just deal with people calling us sellouts. That's it. Uh, now, yeah. now um, wait, I want to go back to this WestJet thing, though. So you don't get people coming up to you in the airport saying so fired up <laughs> I mean, <laughs> see it's funny now it's great it's it always so was funny, funny. Why, why? no but i do get west jet girl a lot i'm like hey uh, west jet girl but i could i do understand about natasha that, that that would be a little annoying now because they did play that commercial a little bit they could much. make a um a song to the tune of West End Girls, West Jed Girls. Um, uh, no, no one? Um, <laughs> the, best, <laughs> the best with Natasha is the best, I swear the best tweet I ever sent out was, 
when I said there's no way that guy is rejecting her. Like she opens the door, she's like, oh, I exactly. can watch the game, yes. and the guy's like, I don't know, but like, yeah, right, buddy. Yeah, he'd exactly. Be like, Come on in, and you'd be like shoving your girl out the door. Come he on. he has like a look on his face, like <laughs> it's not even like he's he's mad. He's just confused about what's yeah. happening. But then again, I guess if a woman, a random woman, came to your door. With McCain potato wedges and said, can I come into your house? You might have a moment where you're like, is this woman crazy? I tried that at my hotel during Grey Cup Week. I went door to door with wedges. Got nothing. Nothing? Nothing. You got nothing? No bites. No bites. Nothing. The ladies don't like the wedges in Edmonton? (laughs) No, it was all dudes. That's the story of our life. <laughs> yeah. that is it's true. a lot the guys, of dudes. The guys, the guys bought you drinks at uh, at our bar. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of that. All um, dudes. Uh, Kate, we really appreciate it. We got to call Jeremy Taggart Kate, now because he passed fun. a uh, kidney stone this last week. So we got to hear Ooh. about that. Yeah, no, that definitely needs to be on the podcast. Yes. It was uh, nice to nice to get you on here. We'll have to get you in studio sometime. We can talk. Yeah, that uh, would be fun because I'd be really fired up for it. Yeah, <laughs> baby. <laughs> so right, fired bye, up. Okay, Thanks, see you, Kate. Kate. <laughs> That's uh, Kate Burness um, joining us on the phone. Sorry, I keep uh, clearing my throat there again. So now I Kate. can't wait to hear this oh, my kidney God. stone story. This is crazy stuff. And Jeremy's house was featured as the home of the week in the Globe and Mail this week. It is a gorgeous house. I've slept on a couch in that house. It's, <laughs> but it said there were like five bedrooms. They didn't. Taggart didn't want you in one of the bedrooms. Or? Like, well, as a house full of people, and he had guests over. And oh, kids, okay. Like, oh, whole family I was there. Oh, the I thought maybe it was just you and the fam, and he was like, "Yeah, we Not have a guest room." But to be honest, Tulsi, this couch is. And I believe he you. did offer me a room, but I said, "I want to watch a uh, Netflix before I go to bed." <laughs> You guys don't mind if I keep you up, do you? Yeah, it's in the hidden in the basement. I was good. Yeah, it's. Um, I just from judging for the pictures I saw in the Globe, looks absolutely beautiful. How gorgeous is that kitchen? Yeah, beautiful kitchen. So, um, if you want to buy uh, Taggart's house, it's for sale right now. Go to GlobeandMail.com. You you can see it. And you can uh, maybe get Jeremy's extensions to go with the house. Oh yeah, he doesn't have extensions. His hair's real. That's right. He's got uh, long, lustrous hair. Lustrous. Lustrous? I think it's lustrous, but I don't know. Lustrous? But should we uh, put air extensions in, do you think? So we have, like, like mullets? Uh, I don't think the hair extensions would stick. Oh, I think they... I think, how, did, how do hair extensions work? You clip them in? Yeah, they kind of, like, glue them to the other hair. Like, it's... Well, then anyway. they could glue. They could glue it to the hair. No, we but have. you'd see it because they hide it underneath the layers. Oh, so we'd have to first grow the sides a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then, all right, perfect. Jeremy, we're talking about getting hair extensions. What do you think? We want to look like you. <laughs> getting hair extensions, you guys? Well, and, uh, Kate Burness is just on the podcast, and she mentioned that when her and Natasha did an event in Lethbridge, and they sold their hair extensions for charity it, to yeah. two dudes for $5,300. How creepy is that? That's kind of creepy, actually. Yeah. I don't know about that much. That's a lot of... Well, it's good for the charity, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's good. Yeah. It's for the charity. That's yes. It's yeah. It's, it's I mean, charity. if they're throwing out money, they start th- selling clothes. And uh, Jay was just telling me your house was featured in the Globe and Mail? Yeah, it, wa- it is. That yeah, is that's awesome. That's, uh, I saw it today. It's beautiful. Home of the week, bud. Home of the week. And what yeah. I didn't realize, and I should have known this because I've seen that feature before... They come and they do like a full interview with you, like the history of how you found the house. And I know. Yeah. It's, it was pretty cool. It, 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 it's very interesting. Well, I mean, it, yeah. I mean, we'd love to stay here, but it, honestly, with three kids and, you know, it's it's uh, it's just time for a, a different kind of space for the kids. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think trading in the lake for a little more yard and maybe a pool. Oh, oh yeah, no. Ooh, and then I'll good. be over more. I was gonna say, Tagger, <laughs> yeah. you may may want to rethink that because you'll have a permanent toolsy <laughs> all summer long on That's that okay. deck chair. That's fine. I love that. I Unky, love that. I mean, Unky Dan's here again. How would Lisa feel about it? 
Okay, we'll have a, like a little area back here. Well, it'll be quiet enough for Dan. You, Dan could just time. have a small tent in the backyard that he sleeps in. Honestly, the, 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 those nights with Dan, when you're just sitting out there for the wee hours, are some of the best times in the summer. So, oh, so yeah, it's all thanks, good. bud. Until I got some, uh, I got bit by mosquitoes. <laughs> the mosquitoes on his legs. He ended up looking like Jeff Merrick. <laughs> Or John Merrick. Sorry, John not, Merrick. not Jeff not Merrick. Jeff, not not our hockey, friend Jeff. Not the hockey bod. <laughs> well, Jeff might also have a, a, a mosquito issue as well. So we'll have to ask <laughs> well, him next. because no, he's in Stouffville. Yeah, there's plenty of mosquitoes up where Jeff lives. <laughs> So, Jeff, if Jeff's listening, uh, Jeff's a great guy. Uh, yeah, I love. Uh, him. He's one of my oldest pods. Yeah, I've known I'd, him for over twenty years. I'd <clears throat> love to see Jeff's uh, legs and see if they're all pockmarked with mosquito bites from summertime. <laughs> still, still hasn't gotten rid of those so mosquito bites. You, don't, you still don't have marks. No, no, mine feet. are gone. Mine are gone. Is there? Is there? It there. took a month to they're go, there, go away. <laughs> I just woke up and I came up from the basement from my from my hiding and I just couldn't stop scratching. I'm like, what is going on? I just remember, I remember getting a text like a week later going, hey man, it's still itchy. I'm like, get out of here. There's no way. You're what's still the date? I got to show Jay. What's the date? What was the date of your golf tournament? <laughs> the, my, uh, the four, 13th of August. 13th of August. Mm-hmm. I will show yeah. him this picture and wait for his reaction <clears throat> from this. Yeah. Um, oh boy! Now, um, now tell us what else is going on. You had a quite well, a week last week, my I friend. Did, yeah. Oh my so, gosh! So yeah, I, I, uh, I passed some kidney stones. Oh, a kidney, a kidney stone. You guys ever have a kidney stone? Ever? Never. I've all I've heard. One of my best friends had them, and he said, "I'd rather have like stabbed myself in the gut with a knife." <laughs> so you thought it was appendicitis so at first? Yeah, I did. It was so bad. I was. Uh, there was about two days of a kind of real pain. Well, a day a day of real pain, and then a day and a half of real agony. Were to the point where Lisa took me to Sunnybrook, and I went to emerge, and they took me in. And morphine didn't even do anything. They had to kick up to the Dilaudid to take the edge off the pain. How was that? Is that, that was, is that fun? The the Dilaudid? Yeah. Well, there's no fun. It's just the pain's gone. So, yeah. Like I didn't. It was like I had. You to, couldn't enjoy so, it. Yeah, I wasn't like, hey, man, put on some <laughs> Zeppelin. Like, there's no more. There's no reason. I was wondering that. You know, like I'm like, more. I want to take morphine in a hospital and just see if, you know, <laughs> see if maybe that's for me. Maybe put maybe. On the, mind putting on the white album. <laughs> no. So the no the 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 law that we're actually started to, mm-hmm. to work for sure like that's the ticket for real pain but uh it was intense in there and guy. how did they find it do they do an x-ray and they say okay yeah, that's no, what it an is ultrasound an ultrasound, okay. an ultrasound. <laughs> yeah so they found that the appendix appendix uh, wasn't swollen or anything and then they saw the stone and oh god so when boys. you passed it when you passed it did you, you did it make it like a plop when it comes well, no, out? No, like the, what well, the, the, pa- the passing of the kidney from the kidney to the bladder is the pain. Get in the kidney and leaving the kidney is where the the most pain is. Ugh. So it's the like the, after that, like when you pee it out. I didn't even it was nothing happened. Some people say if it's big, I'm sure if you're peeing out a corn kernel, that's going to probably hurt. Yeah, or like if you're peeing Ugh. out something that's like the size of a marble or something like that's Ugh. definitely. God. Like that, like, they might have to break that up. But uh, you're, can't you're they do it with sailing. lasers or something? Yeah, lasers. they'll laser blast. They'll laser blast it if it's probably big. But mine was passable, eighty percent passable. With this, I think mine was like probably four mil or under, like half, like, you know, tiny, like just a, a little bit over the. I don't understand why they don't just laser all of them into little microscopic well, bits. Well, because one thing is when they laser them, they can, they can make them more sharp, and then it's Ooh, like it makes oh, it no, work. Okay, no right. bueno. That's so, no good. Yeah. So are you all done saying, then? Are they finished? I'm all set. Yeah, I'm all set. <clears throat> Did they but, say uh, like is it because I thought it was something to do with not drinking enough water or something? Is that what it? Why you get them? Is that no, why people they, get some them? Some people say it, well, it's calcium. So they could. Some people say that it's from maybe too much dairy, or you know, mm. I'm not like a big, huge, you know, dairy guy. I like I drink milk, but I don't like crush it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, just, I found the foot picture. Oh God. Oh no. Oh, just what I wanted to see on a Monday. 
Yeah, exactly. Oh God! Oh God! <laughs> oh, God. Like, you like, have to, you have to send that out I've on seen, the no, on the gram. No, I'm no, cheating. we're gonna it, we're gonna set it out on the Jane Dad it, it podcast. Like, it, it's it's account. so swollen. It's like a, it looks like Honor the Giant. It's like, it's like my a, left foot. It's like a scene from Law. <laughs> it's my left foot starring Daniel Day O'Toole. Oh, man. That is disgusting. Yeah. Oh, my Gross. God. So how are you feeling now, buddy? Are you you're fully I'm recovered? Good. Yeah, it's been about uh, probably five or six days, and I'm, I'm pretty much 90% oh. back. I'm a little, I was a little foggy there from the Dilaudid for a couple days. Ah, yeah. I'm always a little foggy. <laughs> From the Delazzi? <laughs> From just everything. <laughs> the hey, um, we were speaking, of, we were talking about Grey Cup Week. I was in Edmonton this week. Did you ever, did you guys ever play a Grey Cup Week? Yeah, yeah, we did the Toronto one not, not long ago. Nice. Back, uh, I think it was, I don't know, 2012? Is yeah, that when it was I here? remember yeah. that one. Yep, yeah. that was yeah. the one where, uh, yeah, Burton Cummings sang the anthem. I think you're right. How do, you, how do we forget that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, hey, um, Jeremy, actually, we can ask you this question that we also asked Kate Burness. So, on the Saturday night of Grey Cup week, it was uh, a triple bill of Trooper. Oh, this is a great question for Trooper, Loverboy, and Kim Mitchell. In what order would you have put them on stage? Trooper, Kim Mitchell, and who else? Loverboy. Loverboy? Uh, well, I think it... I think you had to go with Loverboy for all time hits. No, like in terms of radio jam. So they would be the the closer. They would be the headliner, okay. and then uh, Kimmy Kim B logo second, and then Trooper first because it's been a, such a long time since their last one. You had the <laughs> the headliner correct, but Trooper was in the middle. Kim opened up. Okay. Yeah. All right. Maybe and then Kim I was, was late. Then I was sitting in the lounge um, flying out on Sunday, and the members of one of the bands, I don't know which one, but I... Or a lighting ooh. guy. Could have been a lighting guy. No, because they were talking about instruments, and the one guy's like... <laughs> no, they were talking about instruments, and they were like, okay. oh, who's playing the halftime? And then they're like, ah, some kid. Some kid. No. Out. Oh, yeah. So they're like, oh, they're I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it looked great, though. It Like, the stage setup was really nice, I have was to it say. A, was it a horny, uh, like, a deal? That they, really nice they deal. Out with yeah. Them? Oh, yeah. It looked really good. Yeah. It looked real, real sharp, actually. I like that. You know I what's like funny? That. We had the Rec Laws on our show last week, and they were essentially our house band. Like, they played us in and out of breaks, and it was really, like, I was very skeptical going in. I was like, this is going to be... And it ended up being so much fun. It would be so much fun, Taggart, if you set up the f***ing skins and we did that one <laughs> night with you. Out? Yes! And every break we had a little chat, you know, and then, all right, now Jeremy's going to f***ing rip into a little Tom Sawyer here. <laughs> Sure. That would be, that would so be fantastic. Much, that would be unbelievably <laughs> That's a fun. Great idea. <laughs> um, we, could, we could even probably fire in some more uh, some more sponsors for the for the folks upstairs if they need it. And how about maybe <laughs> and the whole time we could just on your drum kit could be an image of Toolsy's swollen foot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. There it is. <laughs> Anytime I feel sick, I look at that spot and I just start. I think I'm going to go to work out. What are the swollen members doing these days? Are they still around? Why don't you ask your legs? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Wait, the, the band is in the, mad the child. Band, the, 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 yeah, the mad child. He was like three feet tall. <laughs> Where is that guy now? I, don't know. I saw him doing like some diss rap like a, a year ago or something. I was like, man, that's some play <laughs> right there. Let's see what Mad Child is He's like around. going after some local Vancouver rapper like a... You know what would be great, Taggart, if we had you come into the studio and then the next week, Mad Child <laughs> rapping us in and out of break. <laughs> His new diss track about me. That's right. Dissing you for the job making, you did the week make, before. He's making fun of my house. Yeah, that's right. Track. He just reads the article word for word <laughs> over a hip hop beat. <laughs> um, the Darkest Hour. He released an album in 2017. Yeah, that must yeah. have been where the diss track was. <laughs> what? Oh, what? Uh, like what? Ham? What Vancouver rapper? 
<laughs> I don't know. That, didn't know there were other Vancouver rappers to diss. Yeah, there is. There's a little scene out there. Watch out. Oh, okay, boy. just wait. In August 2011, he returned to his roots by taking part in a rap battle, uh, Canadian-based Battle League. He went up against Dirtbag Dan and won <laughs> on a 3-2 decision. Well, how about this one, guys? Uh, Stoff has a, a diss track that, that Mad Child just did last year. And uh, tell us about it, Stoff. Uh, by the looks of the description, it's uh, called The Funeral, and it's a diss at Snack the Ripper. Snack the Ripper. Here's Let's hear it. Yo, 57 shows and I'm back on the job. Had to wait five days to get this fat, ugly slob. I'm a worldwide legend, you irrelevant goof. Your artist Mercules is ten times better than you. And you're afraid to be yourself. No testicles, no backbone. Finish with the show, you put your spectacles back on. What's wrong with being yourself? You're trying to you got testicles in there. That guy's done. Oh, man. <laughs> Whoever he's talking about is... Yeah, he's finished. He's never going to recover. Dirt bag Dan. No, it was Snack <laughs> snack Bites Pete. What was it? <laughs> snack right Bites Pete. Snack the Ripper. I snack the Ripper. <laughs> I like Snack Bites Pete better. <laughs> snack Bites Pete. Next time you guys are in Vancouver, you're going to get shot. <laughs> snack bites. We walk off the plate. This is for snack bites, you <laughs> son of a <laughs> bitch. <laughs> push, push, push pop says, what up? I need to stop. <laughs> snack push on this. <laughs> oh, man. Jeremy, oh. we glad you we're glad you're feeling better. I think we got to go though. We got to go interview uh, the Snapchat host. Yeah, we got to go uh, <sighs> before producer Tim calls us and gets mad at us. So, okay, guys. Tagger, it's a pleasure. It's a, I'm happy to, to hear you laughing and a, a happy that you're feeling better, bud. Yeah, I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> okay, we'll see you, buddy. Soon. See you, pal. Bye. That's a Canadian rock legend. Jeremy Tagger. That's the podcast, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. We will uh, talk to you next week. Love. <laughs>